<laughs> he's a lot, Johnny he's a lot is taller in real life. Tall. Okay. I, I am five foot six. Okay, Michael is five foot six. <laughs> On a good day. There is another normal sized human in the background, Mr. Lyons. This is not an accurate monologue of what a normal human is height wise, or in any other respect, I hasten to add. Thank you so much. You're welcome. I think as a former world champion, we're all interested in how Edson Mons shoots. So today we're gonna look at how you shoot and try and analyze it between us. Yep. If that works, you've yeah. known him a long time. You've seen him shoot a long time. Absolutely. Has his style changed since he was good? <laughs> yes, it got worse. <laughs> <laughs> it changed, yeah. It's a lot worse than it was eight years ago. Because <laughs> everybody who is good shoots in a very different way. Yeah, absolutely. Unlike a lot of other sports where there's a way to do it. Mm -hmm. So can you shoot and talk us through everything from your feet yeah. to your manically ordered hair? I don't think you're going to have enough time to go through the hair. So um, we should have been up at five in the morning next to you whilst you were... Just preening it. Um, sticking it yeah, on. Yeah, no, the, the shooting thing, I mean, what we, what we can do today, if you like, just go and shoot a few stands. And like I've said before, how I maybe approach certain targets isn't necessarily how I would teach somebody else to do it. But I can just quite happily say, right, let's go in, put some shells in the gun. This is what I do as a default. There are certain targets where maybe I'd force myself to do something different. Yep. Um, but you'll see there'll be quite a lot of just moving out into a space. Um, I will still come through certain targets for sure. But yeah. These are hacks that you've learned will work for you. Um, it's not, not even necessarily hacks. It's just kind of how it's how I developed personally and historically. And there are certain shots where I feel very comfortable that I can just put the gun into the right space. Um, you probably noticed it on that teal, mm -hmm. uh, the big teal we were shooting. Very, very big aggressive teal. I'm quite happy holding up into a spot, looking through the gun and just literally punching in. And that works for me. There's not many people I'd be comfortable trying to get to shoot like that as a, you know, trying to teach them to do it. That's something I would say is a, learning that as a workaround for somebody, definitely not as a base technique, but it's one of the things that over the years, it just, it feels comfortable for me. So that's what I've sort of gravitated towards. It's a bit different now because I, I shoot so infrequently at clays. Some of the stuff that previously I would have done on autopilot now probably isn't there. I need to maybe work a little bit more at being controlled and connecting with stuff. Um, but yeah, let's see if uh, there's any vestiges of talent left lurking around in my uh, undercrackers. I think one of the interesting things is from watching Ed shoots, from watching Chris Childerhouse shoot, for example, shooting teal targets, is having that static gun hold looking through the gun and being able to really rip into a target before it's really developed so it's having that sort of visual confidence to know where your eyes are going to be the fact that you can pick the target up clearly looking through the gun and being able to then execute the shot and from a shooter who's maybe standing behind one of these faster shooters you can then sometimes find yourself pulled into that timing and that can be really tricky because you've either not got the the visual skill set to acquire the target that well or you haven't got the the control and the consistency of your mount to be able to pull that off and if you do the same thing for four pairs, you might hit one of them, but you're not gonna be able to stitch that together consistently unless you learn that technique. And again, that's where some of the elite shooters have got all of that visual stuff dialed in that then the newer shooters or the C to B class shooters are, are not necessarily tuned in to do that. And again, that visual pickup purely takes the time. So the visual pickup, is that a timing based thing in your head or is that just, is, is that timing? Uh, no, I think where you see, where you can pick up targets visually is down to how well your eyes are performing at the end okay. of the day. So if I took my glasses off, my visual pickups would probably be non-existent because I think I'll be waiting for the target to, to arrive for some time. It would have gone, I won't have seen it. So you, know, you, can, you can tune that down. And a, a good example is when I do get a, a change in prescription and I get a new pair of lenses made by Ed, you will find that obviously you've got used to certain visual pickups over time and now you're seeing the target earlier, you may find that you have to settle in and your hold points will need tweaking. So that's something when people get a new set of prescription glasses or a set of contact lenses, and they get that sort of funny feeling at the start, that's their brain kind of getting used to the picture. And you may find that as part of that, you have to tweak some of your setups to allow for it. So if you're seeing the targets earlier, you may find that actually pulling your hold points in close to the trap helps you so you can get your connection back where you were and then make you move away but it's it's this thing of i know we keep coming back to it but there isn't a, a black and white answer to it um, but it's understanding that when you do make a change like that there's always a knock-on effect to it yeah. so although you can see targets clearer 
you may find in the short term you feel that your shooting goes backwards because some of the fundamentals that you've worked on and worked around are now no longer relevant. Yeah, you're fighting you your reset. brain the fact you can see it for the extra five yeah, or six Yeah, you're seeing yards. it better and you're seeing it clearer, but now the setups that you've worked on historically are no longer quite right. They're maybe 95%, so you then need to find the 5% difference, whether that's a combination of where you put your soft focus, where you put your hold point, and how the shot develops. You then need to rework that, find the 5% that's out, and readjust it. So try not to answer this sarcastically, guys. Over to Quality Ed. of vision or clarity of vision is really that important to technique. It's certainly a sound foundation for where your technique should be built upon. And that's not to say that you can't have a really good time and, and, and shoot pretty well when your vision isn't optimised. But if you want to shoot to the absolute best standard that you possibly can and make sure that it, you know, you're not going to have one competition a month where you shoot an 85 and that's it, um, we want to make sure that your eyesight is right. And if you're seeing a blurry target, Sometimes you know, you'll have a, a fuzzy target that looks a little bit bigger and you can get used to shooting at blurs, but when you then have that super high precision HD focus on the target, it might physically look smaller because it's more dialed in. So then at a particular distance, your lead picture will look different. Okay. Um, again, just from a personal experimentation, when I use some of the new uh, range of React lenses shooting at orange targets, I found I was seeing those so much quicker than I'm usually accustomed to that I was blazing over the top. So for me, that visual acuity and target pickup did quite dramatically affect my timing. And I had to almost take a breath to, to slow down in order to engage it, because otherwise, as a, a shooter that tends to be a little bit uncontrolled and a bit slashy, I was slashing even more. So um, I think it, it, it certainly is an important thing from a, from a technique building perspective, yes. That was a good answer. You two really know your stuff. Yeah. Well, we you at should. least make it up and make it sound as though we do. No one's seen through it yet. <laughs> Artists in the business, look at that. Right, let's stick a shot cam on there so that we can see, so people yep. can steal your moves. Yeah, steely moves. through that pair quickly if you would be so kind yeah um so again that's a the target from the left it's just a, a floaty 20 yard possibly crosser for me it's just get eight or ten inches in front of it pull the trigger so i don't particularly want to come ripping through it i hold out i always watch it collapse into the gun yeah um and diminishing then, lead yeah like diminishing lead watching it into the barrel which incidentally i tend to shoot more from my left side than my right side which is a interesting uh, okay. peculiarity to me because you're using your Mm. I My honest answer is I don't know. I'm always more comfortable starting out in front from my left than my right. So you'll probably notice on the shot cam stuff that I tend to target from the right, do more of a swing through or a push away. I will start in front of some stuff, um, but as a default, I tend to do that more, which again... Interesting. It happens. Um, don't I fight it, yeah. Yeah, it, it's sort of historically, I've always been aware of it. It's not a problem. Um, crow target, pretty much point at, connect to it, and I like to let the crow targets, like the incomers, roll and establish a line rather than just trying to point at them at the top. So Because connect. they can be a bit of drift that's hard to yeah, read. Yeah, obviously uh, that's not very far away, so it, it, you're going to be fine with it. But when it starts getting out to bigger distances and they've got a bit more curl going on with them, then very hard to read. establish, get a line and make a move off it rather than just trying to go into a point. Easier to put a bigger gap on the drop than yeah, it is I'm, to... Yeah, I'm always more comfortable shooting something under a bit of power and a bit of movement. So a crow target like that, I'll let it curl, roll, and, and then make Would you move. recommend that from a coaching perspective or is that just what you do? Person to person. So okay. I generally speaking find half people are comfortable taking it at the top and half people like to let it stretch down. Hmm. I, there's not many people who like it or would choose to take that on the way up purely because it's a, a harder shot. It's so a rush as well. Why right? would you? Yeah. It feels weird. Yeah, exactly. So if it makes it feel harder, don't do it. That's a shame because yeah. I was about to treat you. Yeah. <laughs> eh. First question of second stand. Your feet are close together. That's not a bad thing in, in my eyes. I like my feet close together. Yeah. You see a lot of people with more aggressive, bent legs, wide stances, any of this kind of thing. Is it better to have feet close together? What is the answer there? You're, you're going to get sick of me saying this, but it's going to depend person to person. So it's for me, it's a comfortable width apart. So if I was shooting, I'd probably be slightly wider than this. Yep. I would class it probably shoulder width apart. Any wider than that, Yes, you could argue you're making more of a stable base, but I think you're also compromising your rotation. Mm -hmm. When you start getting really, really close together, I think you lose a bit of stability. So for me, somewhere in the middle is good. But again, you know, you'll find people are put together differently. They can have different width hips, different width shoulders, 
find a spot that's comfortable, you're stable, and you have enough movement. Not too wide, not too yeah, narrow. I think try and avoid extremes of either end unless you've got a, you know, for example, some people might have a medical issue where they can't you know, put themselves in certain positions. Fine, obviously they've got to work around it. And same thing with driven, shooting driven targets. You may find you have to do workarounds for people um, just to be able to get them yeah. to get to the right spot. It may not be perfect, but under their circumstances, you're kind of working with what you've got um, generally speaking, comfort. If it's uncomfortable, something probably needs to change. Bent knees? A little bit of weight over your front foot for general shooting. So whether it's oh, general shooting, 70, 30, 60, 40. Again, if you're overly aggressive, that's when you sort of see people with their back foot coming off the floor. Well, if your back foot's off the floor, you're automatically, for me, not that stable. You're relying very much on this and you're not going to have too much rotational um, capabilities. So, Somewhere in the middle, 60, 40, 70, 30, that's good enough. And yeah, you're gonna have a little bit of a bend in your front knee, but it doesn't need to be anything extreme. Why, you see a lot of the skeet shooters sort of really squatting down. Um, I don't necessarily think that's gonna help your sporting game at all. Smash them up with the shot cam, let's see your styles. Ah, that won't the, take long. The stylings of Ed Solomon's. Completely different techniques between those two shots. Yeah, I mean, the, the first one I would class as I, I sort of connected just off the back of the and target just give and it moved away, pushed yeah. away. Second target, I look at, I'm taking that on as a driven, really, so I'm essentially shooting that as a swing through shot. So yeah. inserting further behind the bird and then nice moving slow into the move out the into the front. Speed. I would probably, from, from what we've talked about previously, I'd then fine tune the first shot. I was felt I was a little bit heavy handed with my push away from the first bird. So what I'm going to now do is change and pop my hole point slightly further out to give me Shoot a split it. second longer to see the bird and then make a more controlled away, move away from it. So dead pair of targets. Second bird, I'm happy, happy with the move and happy with the kill. First bird was good enough, but it's not perfect. I think that would be something if I was shooting 100 birds and that was my first pair, I'd be looking to change the move on the first target, playing the long game to try and save me a bird. There's with you. that first target, with those fast crosses, those yeah. ed fast edgy crosses. Are you looking for a gap on that? Or are you just going on a Yeah, I'm speed? moving out to a space. So for me, I moved through that. My perception on that would have been moving with a reasonably quick gun to about two foot. Mm -hmm. Whether that's what it looks like from the back there. Well, it looked like a lot more to me, but that's, yeah, so it's the difference between- I would say with the gun speed in there, I'm telling myself to pull the trigger at two foot. It's probably going off at three to four. Yeah. Um, but you are, the, you are looking for yeah, a I'm moving. I am moving into a space at the front. I don't perceive that as a big gap because of the gun speed. Yep. Um, the second target, the, the sort of quartering incomer, I come from a couple of foot behind, move through, and I'm pulling the trigger just as I come past the front edge. So I'm basically seeing no lead on that. I must be giving it something. Again, that's gonna come down to the gun speed there. But yeah, if you ask me what I saw, I'd go probably two foot on the first, front edge of the second. And I know in reality, I have to be shooting further in front than that, but that's on those shots. Yeah what I see. You have a quite a big speed ramp in your shooting from, from what I can see from behind and from what I've seen before is you start you going very smoothly. It's a really smooth acceleration to quite fast. Is that right from your end? Yeah, I mean, that's when I, when I move away from stuff, I do tend to move away probably quicker than I would like to because it's not a natural shot for me. My natural go-to is going out in front. But again, I think shooting that target and just trying to stay out in front of it probably wouldn't feel quite right. So I'd try and go to a method that for me, I think is gonna give me a better chance of hitting the target and that's moving away from the bird. And that's what you'll play with every time, the better chance of hitting a target. Statistically, what's gonna hit most targets for me on this stand. How much of your sporting sight pictures and gun speeds comes from your FITASC shooting? Or do you look at them totally differently? Um, I, the, at the time, so I, I always shot sporting as my primary discipline. So I was always a sporting shooter and I taught myself to shoot fit ass in like 2013 because um, someone made a throwaway comment about I wouldn't be able to coach. I went full time coaching in 2012 and someone said, oh, you won't be able to coach anyone at fit ass because you shoot everything gun up. So I taught myself to shoot gun down, did the GB selection shoots in 2013, um, got into the GB team then so I can go, oh, I can now. Um, <laughs> so I did that for a, a couple of years, but I'd always say I'm a sporting shooter. I'm not a fit ass shooter as such. But like I said, from a gun down position, I'm quite happy moving into the space and pulling the trigger. You know, I'm, I'm happy just punching into a spot because my brain works quite well like that. Okay. There's certain instances where it doesn't work, where I have to force myself to come from the back. But if I come much further out- And shoot it. I'll try to shoot it from, yeah. a, you know, from the front. So I'll hold out, eyes back, pull. Does that feel comfortable? 
it feels comfortable, but I don't think if I had to do 10 of them, I would hit as many doing that as if I came just off the back of the target and pulled away. Because the speed variables are so different. Um, I think it's just, it, it's, it, that, that shot is, for me, going to a point and pulling the trigger. I know a lot of time I'll get it right, but there'll also be enough times where I get it wrong. And where it's a target like that that's not an easy bird, I think you're starting to take your life in your hands a little bit. I think playing the long game off the back edge and push it away is a better shot, personally. Okay. Because everyone asks in every video we do with you, even though we addressed it a long time ago, what chokes do you put in your gun? I mean, you just change them. Normally 3838. Um, I've actually got cylinder, cylinder in at the moment, just because I've been playing around to see what they'll, what they'll do. Um, I'm pretty convinced that the, these, are, these are made by Teague, incidentally, which we've done a super, super job on them. They're quite naughty. I'm pretty convinced that a 3 8 choke with a, you know, a good shell, as per we're using here, so Sovereign 8, 6 and a half. I don't think there's anything that that's not going to break. So I shot the Tower Challenge with Ed the other day and shot no more than 3 8 on any of it. And there's some pretty extreme stuff there. Um, shot a 43. Three of the birds that I missed were absolutely not down to choke. That was me pointing it in the wrong. I pointed it in the wrong place for seven shots, to be fair, but there were three <laughs> real steady ones that I missed. Um, and some of the long stuff didn't just break, but absolutely crush. So my view is, at the moment, less is more. I always used to shoot half and three quarter, um, and I think that's completely over, over choked now. Fit Task was what you're probably most famous for. Yeah, ironically, as it's the, the thing I, I've probably done the least uh, and, and spent the least time on. But yeah, I, I got to fortunate some time ago in the dim and distant past. Could you show us how you would shoot these two targets in your task style? Yeah, sure. Um, so as a pair or... No, take, take, let's pair do a pair? single yeah. and then do a single and then do a pair. Okay, yeah, uh, fine. Just to, so we can observe your so mount. So this, this would be a, this is where my, I think my, my natural tendency of being comfortable inserting into a spot and shooting helped my fit ass shooting, I think, quite a lot because a lot of the time, first barrels in singles or the first bird in pair, if you're capable or you're comfortable just going into a space and shooting, whether it's like a diminishing lead or a maintain lead or a spot shot, it makes your job a lot easier. It's not always the right shot, so there's certain targets where I would connect to make a move away. But this is something I think that probably played into my hands a little bit more, if you like. So it's because a little bit more of a punch. Shoot that first target exactly the same because that's what you that's did. That's kind of, yeah. The only difference was if I was gone up, I'd be out here and waiting. If I'm gone down, I'll maybe be a little bit further back and sort of blend into the line with the mount. But essentially, as soon as the gun comes in, I'll have a split second connection and just send it. And that second target will be different, but let's watch. Yeah, so the second bird, um, out of interest, because it's a bigger, wider target, I would make more of a move and more of a push away. Um, so you will mount, connect. And yeah, so I would, as, I'm, as I'm mounting into the line of the target, I would almost count that as my connection and I'd be moving away through the shot. So you are moving and mounting as one. Yeah, so blending the mount into the move, really. It's not a two-piece affair. No, I wouldn't ever be mounting up and then coming across. Uh, Almost, yeah, for me, almost never. I would never feel naturally comfortable mounting up and then moving across. Unless I always, perhaps there was a lot of time in the bird was coming. Yeah, I would way. always make a point of trying to blend into stuff. Okay, just to keep yourself smooth. Just felt right. Okay, yep. crack on then. Champ. Oh. So exactly the same. You mounted up, as soon as you closed, you had that same short yep. movement as you yeah, did before. Just, um, try the B. And you would mount that slowly just for timing. Um, that was neat, wasn't it? It was lovely. Well, um, just, shows, just don't disrespect the hole, man. Yeah. Don't disrespect um, the hole. I, I, my my view is with a with a gun mount: so the faster you're likely to do it, sorry, the faster you do it, the more likely it is to be wrong. So, as a not a natural gun down shooter, my argument would be, from certainly from my perspective, if I can work a very slow controlled mount and still get the shot done why would I want to rush them out? There's going to be instances where I have to. So the next stand where you've got some sort of closer, fiddlier stuff, you haven't got the time and the space on it, I would have a fast amount, but I'll always try and do it slower and steadier just because I think it makes it feel easier. So you mounted into just in front of the best, very similar to your sporting style. And you can sort of kind of see where they work together very yep. well because you you started in front of the bird and then pulled off yeah, of that. Yes, so I, I mounted up nice steady mount. I mounted to well, I was just off the nose, give or take, you know, probably a foot. 
and then just a, a push away to what I would perceive to be five or six feet. Again, that's you know, have what some you see, speed in your matter, barrel as we've discussed. I'm seeing. Um, yeah, felt controlled, and that is essentially how I would feel the shot would feel when I shot it gun up because my whole point when I'm shooting gun up will be a bit further out, so I've got time to watch the target come in and then move away. It's kind of a similar move. Interesting. So you don't see too much of a difference between them on the majority of targets? Um, yeah, I try and keep it as close, or we'll try and keep it as close together. So what I didn't really want to have to do is have methods for shooting sporting and methods for shooting fit ass. Um, it would get complicated. The main thing for me would be getting used to the timing of shooting gun down, because it's not a natural thing for me. I, I, even though with all the game shooting I do now, I still don't feel like a default gun down shooter. So when I come in to do this, I'm very aware of, all oh, right, I've got to force myself to not be here. Yeah, because when you here. get into a stand, you always mount two or three times to the kill point. You mount usually twice to your whole yeah, point and my, then you part move. part of my routine. So again, when I shoot fit, I have to actively work on not doing that because you'll get warnings because you go into the stand and you, uh, warning. So part of my routine when I shot fit ass would be rather than mounting into the kill point, I would set up to the kill point like that, address it. So that's the equivalent for me of mounting the gun, making yep. sure my foot position, everything's comfortable at the kill. Then I would wind back to the hold point, then I'd let the eyes go back and then I'd start the shot. So it's kind of the same thing. So I needed a bit of change on, on timing and routine as well. But yeah, mechanically, not a million miles different. There were instances where the birds would have to be taken differently, of course, but you know, you take that as you come. Interesting. Did you develop this pre-shot mounty mounty go backy, mounty, mounty, go routine? Or is that just something that you've done naturally since the start? I mean, that's a very, very catchy way of describing it. Oh, uh, should we just call it the Solomon's the technique? Future, the, for the future book, um, mounty, maybe mounty that should be by Ed Solomon's. one. Um, yeah, so that's something I worked on on my sporting shooting with Henry Hopkins. So my pre-shot routine and my, my sort of approach to the stand, that's something I worked on specifically for some time. And that's kind of how I bled it over into FITAS. So I worked on it from a sporting perspective but then it, it transferred over into my fist ass shooting. They're not that different than in your eyes? It, no, it's fine. Yeah. Other, other than the obvious gun down bit, it's kind of trying to use the same framework. So I worked on like a traffic light system of that is my kill point. That's the red, hold point back to amber, eyes back to green. And when I'd gone through to the green light, I was then in my mind clear to cool pull. So okay. I'd, done, I'd gone through my checklist and not missed any steps. Getting your head in the zone ready yeah. for the shot. Do you ever get to the point of almost green light and then go back to red? Yeah, because if you, Oh, you're stupid those like you know you'll today your phone will go off you'll have a stone under your shoe that's annoying you someone will drive past if something breaks you what you feel breaking is your you know breaking your focus breaking your routine stop reset and go back because if you've got five percent of your focus back here when you're calling pull on something that you shouldn't be thinking about that's enough to cost you a target and that might be the target that does it for you yeah when you can win by one or two ones are very important yeah absolutely thank you next stand yeah why not perfect mm -hmm. So just watch you shoot this last stand that we're going to have in this video. Yep. Your movement generally, is that coming from what I've seen all the way through your body? Some of it happens in the shoulders, the hips, the legs, like you do seem to do a bit of a, a full body rotation. Yeah, so I, my view would be that your arms are there to sort of do the fine control really and most of the movement wants to come from your core uh, and, and sort of unwinding into the shot, which is why I think your foot position and stuff is so important because if you, if you run out of foot position, your only option is then to push it around, push the gun around with your arms, and you can start rolling shoulders, coming off line, gun coming away from your face, etc. That's quite an interesting sound that we just shot there because it's, it's downhill and you're shooting fairly low targets. So that's a stand where I actively put a little bit more weight over my front foot. You're breaking and, the middle and, to get yeah, the lower slightly angle. slightly hinge into the shot, because otherwise it'd be very easy, especially with that low income and coming down to lift your head and go up over the top of it. So just a bit more weight over the front foot. So previous in 60, 40 on a you know, head height target, I might go 70, 30, and then just hinge slightly more from the hips. So you've got a little bit more weight over the yeah. front foot just to help you get over the top of the gun. That's controlling your up and down, not your arms. Yeah, yeah. Um, and then laterally, there was actually very little movement involved on that. The first one, just a connection and just moving off the bottom right hand corner and you'll see the quartering bird. I just held out pretty much at a kill point, watched it come into the barrel and almost no movement and just shot for me, perceived it, perceived leading edge of the target. Um, and yeah, that, that worked okay. Right, thank you very much for letting us stare at you for the morning. It's been uh, it's been enlightening. It's nice to have actually shot shot a few stands and yeah, just talk it through. Because say if I do come out now, it's just 
shoot half a dozen shots here and there. And Usually from the hip. That's or a, yeah, from rarely from the shoulder, rarely the pigeon probably. <laughs> Um, exactly, that's maybe next week's video for you. Just because I do something doesn't necessarily mean it's right. So for the people who go, oh, that's an interesting shot, or that's an interesting choice of shot, it works for me, or yeah, historically it's worked yeah. for me. Um, it's not to say that that is the only way of doing it. It's not to say it's the right way of doing it. It's also not to say it's the way that I would necessarily coach somebody else to do it. As you've seen, there's one yeah. shot there where I was quite happy standing in front of the bird, and it never looked comfortable for you. So take it off the table, learn what works for you and what doesn't work and work around it. He's got a website, the link's in the description. He sometimes takes on new clients, but rarely. Yeah, for, normally for a very short window and then it gets closed again. But yeah, no, always happy to answer emails if uh, even if I can't take people on, feel free, mm. anytime. I'm sure there's a limit to that though. If you're looking to, for him to fix all your shooting over an email. That's, yes, uh, I, I don't do um, online lessons, which is just for clarity, because that's getting asked on a, an alarming regularity now. Do you ever leave so, the country? I do sometimes. Are you but, allowed? Uh, yeah, <laughs> yeah not, normally not allowed. Um, but yeah, uh, don't ask for online lessons, because no, I won't. There you go. That was black and white, wasn't yeah, it, go. guys? Thank you very much for watching, yeah, Ed. Pleasure. As always, thank you very much for yeah, entertaining been... our stupid Enjoyed questions. Enjoyed it, mate. Thank you very much. <laughs>